Alright, hey, I'm back. Back on the YouTube grind. Um, I had a little bit of free time today and um, decided what I want to do for my next video is a little bit of TRX stuff. I have my strap set up. Uh, I actually ended up getting that for my dad for uh, Father's Day. He never uses it, so I might as well take advantage of it. <clears throat> so, um, you know, if you're not familiar with me and what I do, I'm a trainer. Um, and I also teach group exercise classes. Um, I'm not TRX certified, but I do occasionally teach TRX, like I said, for um, a class. And so I've been taking a lot of time recently to learn um, all like the nuances of the TRX strap and how to really maximize them. So today I'm gonna plan on doing just a little um, circuit, nothing too crazy, just like some basics type stuff. Um, just to kind of get you started if you say you just got one and you're not really sure where to start. Um, well, actually, I remember I remember um, when I got the strap from my dad, they came with a little little sheet with some pretty basic, um, simple exercises. So I'm probably going to be doing a lot of the same ones um, that are on there. But hopefully I can give you a few more kind of tips, um, little cues to focus on when you do the exercises. And um, I'm going to be doing it in a circuit form, so one after another. And actually, what I'm planning on doing is kind of like what's called peripheral heart action circuit. So go from lower body to upper body, lower body to upper body, um, and so on. Um, so yeah, how about we start? Let me set up. So I'm just going to show you the exercise first and the cues to be focusing on. And then I'll go through the circuit for realsies. So. I don't have the best setup here, to be honest, but we'll make it work. Um, I'm going to be taking a step back, so let me make sure I'm in the shot, actually, because that's annoying when you're not in the shot. First, we're going to be doing just uh, TRX squat. I see a lot of people do these wrong. I see them lean way back into their squat. And, um, and then you're, you know, you're just using your upper body a lot more than your legs. You want to go straight down your squat. So you want to start with the handles close to your shoulders, and then hip hinge back, hip hinge, or hinge hips down. Go down as deep as you can. You don't have to go down this deep if you don't have the range of motion, the mobility. But go as deep as you can and come up. So I'm mainly pushing my legs. I'm um, using my arms a little bit to kind of help pull up when I need it. Alright, so that's number one, squat. And because we're doing peripheral heart action, we're going to do upper body next. And we'll switch to just the chest press. I'm going to just kind of lean this one upwards. Make sure I'm um, in, again in the shot. So chest press, um, there's a few different ways to set it up to make it a little bit easier. The closer you get to the anchor point, the harder it's going to be. The farther away you walk, the easier it's going to be. So think of like the progressions of like a wall push up. When you're standing straight up and down, you're pushing up against a wall. That's a lot easier than say doing on the ground. And even harder than that would be if you're at a decline with your hands all over. Um, you're at a decline, so you want to think of the chest press like that. So, I'm gonna stop. Okay, sorry. Got distracted by my mom. Had to get the groceries in. The chest press, yeah, so closer you get to the anchor point, harder it's gonna be, farther up it's gonna be easier. The easiest though is if you go on a staggered stance, right? If you have one foot in front of the other, and this is probably the easiest form of the chest press. And if you're a beginner, I recommend you start like like that. And um, it will really, it, re it reduces the stability required a lot for the, for the chest press. Because this is a lot more challenging than say a push up or whatever because these two bands, the free motion of it allows them to move around a lot. So, um, so yeah, stagger stance. 
you're going to bring your chest down and press. Uh, make sure when you bring your chest down, bend your elbows, keep the straps close to your arms. See a lot of people, they bring their hands up like this. Um, so remember just keeping it close. Actually, like I like to start with the bands kind of on my shoulders. I come down, rotate, and then press. So that you see I'm, it's on the lateral part of my, of my arm, and then it's on, um, on top. All right. Next, we'll go to single leg RDL. Uh, if you're new to training, single leg might be a little challenging as far as some balance. Set this up. So doing just a two-legged RDL, if you want to start, good work. I'm gonna move this farther back. Yeah, right there. So this is two-legged. Just a standard RDL. See, my knees aren't really coming forward. I'm pushing my hips back. As I go down, I feel a stretch in my hamstrings come up. Squeeze the butt, squeeze the lower back. Single leg is going to look like this. A lot more challenging. So it's still the same thing, keeping your um, knee back, pushing the hips back. And really important with this one too is three points of contact with your foot. It's called tripod foot. Um, my strength codes are big into that. So making three points of contact with your big toe, your little toe, and your heel. All right, making sure you maintain that throughout the whole movement. Say your your big toe is coming up off the ground, or you know your heel is coming off the ground, you're coming up under the balls of your foot. That's not good, and you're not balanced. Um, so important, especially for like athletes, you know stuff like that. Or uh, if you're you know older, um, fall prevention, that kind of thing, strengthening the feet, and um, Focusing on that tripod foot is very important. Um, next, we're going to go to the rear row. So since we're doing pure full hard action, going back and forth between upper and lower. I'm just going to move this whole thing. rotate to a neutral grip. So underhand or um, pronated and go to a neutral. Never want to go to a supinated. Supinated palms up. If you're doing supinated, that's going to activate a lot more of the biceps, which we're not really trying to focus on here. And then it's the opposite of the chest press, where if you walk closer at any point, it's going to be harder and walk farther up, it's going to be easier. There's a couple different ways to do it. You can do more lat based and keep your elbows in tight when you pull, or you can get more trap rhomboid based and keep your elbows up high and squeeze. So depending on what you want to focus more, lats or mid back, you can get the elbows in close or up high, um, depending on what you're focusing on. And like I said, if you want to focus more biceps, supinated grip. So there's lots of different ways to do a row. All right, so that's four, and then the last one, oh, forgot my mat. Let me grab the mat real quick. All right, last one we'll be doing, while well, I'll be demonstrating, before I get into it, is um, the extension, core extension. So this is a core specific exercise, but you'll for sure put in the lats too. So you start looking away from the anchor point, Get your knees down and similar kind of position for if you're doing chest press. But instead of doing a chest press, you're gonna let your arms go up and go into a straight lengthened position. So 
you can do this for reps and just pause for a second at the top of the movement or you can sit and hold kind of like a plank and come back after a certain period of time whichever one you want to do um, this requires a lot of core stability when you're in that extended position um, really good really good one it incorporates the lats too all right so now that we've demonstrated all the movements I'm just gonna do one I'm gonna set the mat or the camera in a spot where you can see me the whole time and I'll do one circuit from the back um, so you can get that view and then one from the side so you can get that view too all right and I plan on doing 10 reps of each movement but you can do how many you want all right let's do it Now go chest press. Now we're gonna go for the ropes. to the overhead extensions. So that's the front slash back view. I realized while I was doing it, so the back view, but when you turn around, <laughs> you're seeing that front side. All right, and now we'll get the lateral view so you can kind of get a feel for that, a different point of view on the exercises because you might not be see all the little nuances of the movement from one, from one side, um, which is a key thing, you know, when you're 
when you're showing an exercise or you're trying to learn exercise from someone, trying to show someone, you should always look for different views. Um, it's really important when you do like an overhead squat assessment, which I've talked about in the past on my channel, the overhead squat assessment. When I'm assessing someone, I don't look at it just from straight ahead. I gotta get from the side too. Um, there's different little things. Like for example, a squat, like pelvic tilt, you can't really see from the front that well. Um, sometimes arms falling is a little bit harder to tell. But from the side, you can see that very easily. So I'm gonna do another round through and see if you notice anything different from, as you didn't see from the, uh, from the original one, all right? in the shot. We're good. That is it for the basic circuit. Um, just hitting a few different moving patterns. 
kind of just getting a sweat going. So I did 10 reps for each exercise, back to back to back. Um, so you can, you can modify that however you want. You can do the less repetitions. You can put a little bit of rest in between uh, exercises and you should for sure add more rounds. I just did two rounds. I do probably at least like four or five because that's not very, not very long working, working set. Working set is probably maybe like, I mean like three minutes or something, you know? So um, do about five of those, 15 minutes of work. So you could probably do even more. And like I said, you can do more repetitions for sure. Just modify it for your skill level and or athletic level, fitness level, and progressively make it harder. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them down there. That's my neighbor. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. All right, bye.